I recently reported on the fact that six different Chinese automakers are planning on using Tesla's Giga Casting, not straight from Tesla, but from the manufacturer that supplies Tesla with the Giga Cast. However, no one in Legacy Auto plans on using it. Why? Well, they're too big, too slow, and make decisions at a glacial pace. And yet, Neo, a Chinese automaker, is planning on using something similar to Tesla. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans, and I'm stoked to see you here on the channel. Awesome to see so many new subscribers lately. Fantastic to have you all. Now, welcome to all of you, and welcome back to everyone else. Now, Neo has introduced integrated die casting technology in the ET5, which is their new, well, some are saying Tesla killer, Tesla fighter, electric sedan. It's going to compete directly with the Model 3 and with the Xpeng P5, which also is a revolutionary vehicle, which I compared against the Toyota Camry and found that the Toyota Camry was basically a heap of shit in comparison. Now, aside from all the incredibly impressive technology in the ET5, it also will come with a semi-solid state battery offering 1,000 kilometers of range. That is next level. Now, some journalists are saying that the automotive industry has been captivated by the look and the pricing of NEO's new sedan, the ET5. However, some of the new technology that NEO are using in this vehicle does seem to have been overlooked by the media because, well, NEO are in China. Remember, NEO do sell their cars in Europe and they are planning on expanding to at least 20 countries worldwide within the next two years. Now, asked by CNEV Post in a December 19 interview whether NEO has plans to introduce large die casting machines similar to Tesla in its production line, William Lee, NEO's founder, chairman, and CEO did not give a straight answer, but he did reveal some interesting information. This is what he said. We are using an integrated die casting process for the rear subframe of the ET5. Now, when checking the ET5's technical specifications, you can see that the rear subframe uses a so-called integrated hollow cast aluminum process. Now, compared to traditional legacy autos, all steel welded process, this technology allows for a guaranteed strength increase from 31 KNM to 34 KNM while reducing weight at the same time by 13 kilos. It also means you get more space inside the car, around about 11 liters in the trunk. So you're getting a vehicle that has more practicality in terms of the space inside, it's lighter weight and it's stiffer. Now, the doors of the new ET5 as well adopt the integrated molding aluminium extrusion process and they add a reinforcement design to the inside of the profile cross section. Now, doing this actually allows the weight to be reduced by eight kilos while the aluminium extrusion door seal also plays a vital role in the side impact, increasing the car's structural rigidity and therefore its safety. So how does it do this? Well, the door seal achieves the effect of energy absorption under a certain speed of collision, thus ensuring the safety of passengers and avoiding deformation of the battery pack. Due to the large deformation of the base plate during the side impact, according to NEO. Now, in fact, in addition to these two changes, which are pretty significant, the NEO ET5 is equipped with the company's in-house developed four piston calipers which also use aluminum alloy and one-piece casting technology. Now, the large die casting process is widely known after being used by Tesla, allowing production of large castings to eliminate heat treatment and shorten production cycles. Basically, what this means is they're speeding up the process of building these cars by having more efficient robots that can build the car more quickly, having larger pieces rather than having to weld all these different pieces together. And as you would probably know, within the month of October, NEO sales went significantly down. In fact, they were one third of what they were the previous month. The following month, they went up again, more than tripled. In fact, they almost quadrupled. The reason for that, they were installing this exact technology into their production lines in order to make their cars better. Now, tell me, how often do you hear of Legacy Auto doing this? 
making these kinds of significant changes. You don't really, you know what they you know what they do? They do the same thing that they've always done. Do it using traditional forms, do it using steel, doing it use doing it the good old way. And that, my friends, is why another reason they are in significant trouble now that an onslaught of EV manufacturers is about to hit the worldwide market. I honestly don't know what's going to happen to Legacy Auto, but I do have my predictions. I've made a video about those. I'll put a link in the description below to my predictions for 2030. Thanks for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.